Welcome, thank you for coming back. I appreciate you being here. So, what we're going to be doing in this video is uh, continuing on with our walls and our dimensions of those walls. And what we've done in previous videos is to put in an exterior wall, a 15 foot exterior wall representing a portion of our, our, uh, our apartment. And then we put some dimensions on it and change those dimensions around to meet the, the standards that we're looking for in regard to the AutoCAD drawing that we did last week. And we put in some interior walls and again did the same thing. We modified our dimensions that were there in order to make it uh, a similar model to what we did last week. So now we're going to be putting in on our screen some horizontal lines. They're really vertical lines in the model itself. But we're going to put on some uh, horizontal lines that represent uh, you know, the walls that make up the bottom of the bedroom, the south uh, wall of the bedroom, and uh, the bathroom, and the closet down here. So without any further wordage, let's go ahead and do that. So if we go to the Home tab, go to the Wall button. It was already selected here. Oh, save the project. Um, sure, why not? We're going to call that apartment. Uh, it's nice that uh, Revit does this. We're going to call that apartment too. We have a couple different apartments going on there. And you'll notice, here, here's something to look at. When we go to Save As, I'm going to go back to Save the Project. You'll notice that some of these uh, Revit files have numbers to them. When you save, like what we just did, when you save something, it automatically, automatically creates a backup file at that uh, point. So we saved actually two files right there. I just saved it in Apartment 2. But these other apartments up here, uh, these other apartment examples, every time we do a save, it'll have Apartment dot zero 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 one. 0002 and so on and so forth. These are backup files that you could use later. You don't necessarily want to open these files to open up a, a drawing because it won't be as new or as current as the other ones, but in, just in case some of your Revit files become corrupted, then uh, you can revert back to the, some of those earlier versions. And eventually, if you get a good file and you're not going to use it anymore, you could probably delete these ones with the extra numbers to them. Just thought I'd mention that. All right, let's draw some more walls. Let's draw a wall. This wall is going down about 10 feet 2 inches, and that's a wall that uh, defines uh, the hallway. So let's go ahead and draw that out, kind of roughly where that's going to go, and escape once. And we're going to draw the wall down here that's going to be the other side of the hallway, and it separates uh, where the closet's going to be. Escape once. And one more line that's going to represent the outside of the apartment. So if you click on these three walls that we just did, do our pick box window from the right to the left just to make sure all the constraints are there properly. Going from level 1 to level 2, which is what we're looking for. Wall center line, and that looks good to me. Let's take this first wall and uh, put our dimension on it. So again, lots of dimensions here, but this is the kind of the one we're, what we're looking for. Make that a permanent dimension. Just to reiterate what we did in the previous uh, video. Pull this out to give us some room, because you want to make sure that all your dimensions are and make room for the other dimensions we're going to put in here. We're going to make sure your exterior dimensions are on the outside so the dimensions don't cross, the dimension lines don't cross each other. This dimension goes over here. This is going to be our 10 foot uh, 2 inch dimension. So let's go ahead and click on our dimension, move our dimension lines, the tab key. Move that over here. With this dimension line, and move that to the very first element of the wall that we run into there. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and change this one to just make it consistent with the other ones, even though it's not going to say 24 feet anymore. It's going to say 24 feet and some change. Uh, we'll save that dimension until later. So, now that we have that dimension in place, again, click on the wall. Reiteration here. We have that listing dimension that we had before, and but we, what we really want to do is change the permanent dimension. And again, the only way to change that permanent dimension is to click on the wall itself. You try to change the permanent dimension by clicking on it, Come on, let me let me click on it. Don't want to change that, but if you try to change it this way, okay. Now what's going on here? What it tries to do, if you click on that dimension, there you go. Maybe I just had to be out a little bit. It will give us the opportunity to replace our dimension with text, but it doesn't give us the value to change it or that ability to change that dimension. If you try to change the dimension to maybe something else like 12 feet. It's going to hate us. And it says uh, fully specified descriptive text for dimension segment instead of a numerical value. It's not going to let you fake a dimension as Revit calls it. So you can't do that. So if you go through channels, you click on that wall, change this dimension, and we're going to make that dimension it's supposed to be 10 foot 2. So 10 foot 2, enter. And there's that dimension. So real quick, let's do this one. I'm going to do this silently. You can just watch the steps involved. Now oh, I can't keep my mouth shut. So yeah, what we want to do, 
Oh, we're ready to change that to a temporary dimension. We'll make that a permanent one. Click in the dimension itself. Take that uh, grip. Put it on the inside of the wall there. Click on the wall itself. Change the value of the dimension, which is going to be 13 feet 8. 13 feet 8. 13 single quote 8. Enter. Ooh, didn't quite do that. I must have picked the wrong one. So it's this dimension I want to change. 13 foot 8. Enter. So the listening dimension, or the temporary dimension I changed. So that's that. And the next one we're going to do this one, we're going to save that for the next video, and then we'll go on from there.